Oh. All right, everybody. First off, we know everybody enjoys gameplay of the belt, so we're gonna kick it off some. What we got here? Way of Fire, His Sap, Sea Serpents, Base Rods, Ice Staff. There might be Fire Staff. Forget what the hell. Fire Staff. I didn't really need the extra defenses. The Harkness is tanky enough. So, we can just see. It works. We ain't bullshit. I mean, we got people all around us. <clears throat> Watch all these people die. Way of fire is just nasty. And after the gameplay, we'll run right into the build video. Of course, we get two variations if you would like to beam or if you don't want to beam. This is the no beam. The other one is just as effective with the beam. Now, if you go no beam, you can have an extra heal. But with his sap, you don't necessarily need it. I mean, most of the time, everybody's going to stun and immobilize you anyway. And we are still missing a line of pen, so it will be even better yet. Light armor is not maxed out. We're working on that. So there's potential to even kill him even quicker. Just slittle. Very slight. And this guy, he did eventually start to fight back. He was just waiting. I don't know what he was doing. Or try to survive. I don't know. One or the other. Everybody's trying to do it, Cyrodiil. Survive! believe that was it. I don't think there's any more. That is it. All right. Now, here we are. I ordered now, if you go deadly, I recommend Gaze of Sithis. We'll move on to that. First off, get your line of medium, put Trini on the head. This sap on the shoulders. I don't worry about impen too much. I like the roll dodge. But that is up to you. If you don't roll dodge, go impen. Go for it. Eventually, try stat all these. We ain't got the hock to. And of course, you want your head armor reinforced on the head, chest, pants. So we are in two heavy, one medium, four light. As you can see, our pen is still fairly decent. But of course, you'll get a little more pen with minor breach, major breach. That'll uh, help increase. Now, all of our small pieces, we are well fitted. We have four well fitted. One, two, three, four. Three reinforced. And then, of course, Sea Serpent's Coil. We're tanky enough. Let them beat on us. 
You can get bloodthirsty, infused, whichever you prefer. And we are going one infused, two bloodthirsties. Now um, Barnes, the fire set from my Dragonite, which I run mag cost reduction on a Dragonite. In that video, we do not need a mag cost reduction. Because Arcanist Sustain is through the roof, so you can more than welcome to put either either weapon damage glyph, spell glyph, on here. Because your sustain is good enough. As we'll show you here. You gotta buff it up. When it buffs up, it's 2k recovery for both Stam and Mag. The passives are nuts. Now, of course, we got one sword, Nern Hone, flame damage, and then a mace, sharpen, just to get extra pen, shock damage. And then we have Inferno, defending. I was probably made by accident, it's usually ice staff, but it's fine. It's been working. So, let's uh, go get buffed up. First off, buffed up here. Persistences are good. We do have 2k mag recovery. Maybe that already did go through. I thought it was more. Hold on here. There you go. Even though no. Yeah. I mean, that's our recoveries. And of course, weapon damage goes up a little. And it's going to go up major with uh, sea serpents. The food, we are rock bear hunch. We are Breton. And the apprentice to boost your spell damage, mud of stone, and of course, vampire stage three. Help us with tankiness, and never had so much sustain as a vampire that <laughs> she would with an arcanist. It was ridiculous. But being a Breton, almost a counteracts cost. So sustain is good. Survivability is good. Damage is great. All of it's great, actually. And then we'll go to the championship tree. Now, of course, the green, you know. Cyrodiil. Reduce your stamina. Max mount speed. And your food and potions. Pretty simple. And then. Blue tree. Wrathful Strikes, boost your damage, there's a single target, could probably change that actually, could probably go with AoE actually, the beam's AoE, it's not really single target, but this is what we had it on, what it was, it's fine, and you went Ironclad. Probably sacrifice Ironclad as tanky as you are and put it somewhere else if you wanted. Dot, actually thinking now that this is the way it is, there's only one single target skill. This would probably be better. Sorry, this rough copy. This is what we got and it works. Now, red tree, fortified. We don't need the extra health. Especially when we go deadly, hissap, gaze sithis. You don't need the health. This build, go with that. Ironclad, survival instincts, pain refuge, sustained by suffering. 
you run a run faster, of course you always have celerity, but you're gonna have to sacrifice one of these. And these are all nice survivabilities. Now on to the skills. Of course. We'll start on the front bar. Ah, oh, trying to pronounce these words. Your treaties. Treaties. How about treaties? Now this is going to give you your major brutality and major sorcery. And of course, with it activated, restore magicka, stamina, generate crux if you don't have any, and your class abilities. The only one we have is the flail, the moment, you do an additional 4,355 magic damage. So that's free damage. Free damage. And of course, this skill, your major brutality and sorcery, even without a proc, it carries over front bar, back bar. So it is active all the time without being double barred. That is fucking awesome. Now, flail. This is a nice spammable. And it has some extra bonuses. Lash out your foes. 6,882 damage. Physical. You figure most people probably have more spell resistance than physical. If they are brats. Like herself. And you get a heal. And you generate crux. And you immobilize enemies. And you mark them with an abyssal ink for 20 seconds. And deals up to 100% more damage to enemies with less than 50% health. And you deal 5% increased damage to the enemy during in Abyssal Ink. So there's the catch with the ink. 20 seconds, they're going to take 5% more damage. Now, Blood Craze, we all know. Everybody's been using it. Gives us a heal, plus it helps proc Way of Fire. And... Flex bleed, and it's a nice dot, and it's a nice heal. Every time it does damage, it gives you a heal, and it's just pretty much a boost way of fire. It keeps pressure. Now this is kind of your flex spot. If you need to heal, put it there. If you need something else, put it there. Passive. Say so you got. I, bunch of gankers around. You can, there's two passives you can put there. The Fighter's Guild, Expert Hunter, of course, and we have Revealing Flare. And Revealing Flare in this your passive would boost your mag recovery even more. And you get Major Protection. Which would make you even more tankier. Which could be beneficial. So that is up to you. Oh, and this here. Say maybe you want to another heal over time and do some more damage. And reduces their damage done. And the other morph is actually another armor deduction against your enemy. And generates crux while slotted. And also reduces your damage taken. Reduced by 2% per active crux. So, that. Free damage reduction, free damage, heal, all in one skin. So that is up to you. Now, this is our nice execution. Since everybody likes to bob and weave all around you, well, they ain't getting away from this. Still a great execution, plus this will proc away a fire on top of it. And then our ultimate, basically for a passive... And of course, it is a good ultimate for damage. Because it does a dot over time and it stuns them. It's just a great ultimate on any class. Now, on to the back bar. Of course, we are using the Vatron staff, so elemental susceptibility is a must. And that's our force of major breach and a nice dot and damage over time. I guess we didn't cover the Vatron staff. 
of course, you use elemental susceptibility, and of course, it's going to tether them, and they're going to take flame, shock, and frost damage, which increases by 1% each time it deals damage, up to 20% extra damage over 10 seconds. So, it's a nice dot, nice pressure. You don't necessarily need the perfected version because you're going to be on the front bar while this is active. But it, that is up to you. You can get that from the arena. Matron Arena. Matron Hollow. Wrath of Elements. It's a solo arena. Run through it normal, but your choice. Fill this sticker. Preferably I staff at defending. Choice is yours. Of course, we accidentally made fire, but it's been working. Now, this is a whacked ass skill. Jacked and powerful. Rune Guard of Still Waters. That's what you want to morph it to. Then get Matter Resolve. As you can see, we're not using Resolving Vigor. This will give you minor resolve, so I figured why stack them. And this skill just does too much, so I decided to give up minor. Major resolve. Major bomb. Whatever. What the fuck is it? You know what I mean. Resolving Vigor. This was worth it more. What are we doing? There we go. So you get your minor resolve, and also after one second, the spell weave immobilizes the enemies for three seconds. So there's this, we have three snares on this build, three CCs, and you get minor protection for 20 seconds. And also, first time you are damaged while below 50% health, the minor protection is consumed to heal you. 9,329 health. Scaling off your max health. So that's our burst heal. You can spam this and you can get a heal. Then armor. It's just like free damage, free survivability. I mean, you can stand there and spam this and it does damage at him. And you live. It's a nice damage shield. Of course, it scales off your max health. We don't have too much health to pay, benefit it, but it's alright. Also, max health per crux spent, and you get a heal. It's another heal. And then this is our source of major resolve for 30 seconds, which is nice. And when they hit you, they get minor breach. Blows against your armor, also generating crux. Up to every five seconds. And then our main stun, which is stackable with all the immobilizations. Rune of the colorless pull. And it has some other benefits. It will inflict minor vulnerability, minor brittle, increasing their damage taken by five percent and their critical damage taken by ten. And it will stun them for four seconds after a delay. And the ability cannot be dodged. So after you go through your mobilizations and get all your buffs on them, and hopefully they're wounded, you put this on them, lay them down a little more, reproc this, and then whirlwind them. Whack them with this, then whirlwind. They should be dead. Majority of the players in Zero will be dead. Now, this here, you can either go with the Tide King, which a lot of people are running away from, so which is why I do not have it equipped. I just figured for sticky situations, this is a nice survivability ultimate. And the shield collapses, you lash out, dealing all of the damage absorbed as magic damage to the enemies. So it does damage. You 
Got a pile of people beating on you. It's gonna hurt like hell. Now, we have these whack ass passives. Still learning these myself. But we can go over them together. Faded Fortune. It's going to increase your critical damage and critical healing. 12% for 7 seconds. Which is nice. Pretty base. Nothing special you need to do. And when you are restored magic or stamina, increase your weapon and spell damage by 5% for 10 seconds. The Psychic Lesson increases damage dealt by status effects. So that's actually going to boost, should boost Way of Fire and your Blood Craze, which are your status effects. Um, just not a dot. Oh, it's going to boost this too. Elemental susceptibility going to be boosted. So all your dots are boosted with that. And then our pen. Of course, every ability you have slotted in this skill tree is going to add pen. We have two, which is all right. I mean, we're going to get a whole other line of pen when we get here. Which is going to help. That's going to add another almost 2k. So I ain't too worried about it. Just got to get leveled up. That's all. These passives. The Soldier of Apocrypha. Form a secret soldier within your mind. A defense against arcane forces without. While a beneficial soldier of Apocrypha ability is active on you, increases your armor. 1980. So there's another free armor. Wellspring of the Abyss. We're not benefiting from... Well, on the back where we are. Bubbles up from the depths of Psyche. Increasing your health, magic, and stamina recovery. 129. Each soldier of Apocrypha ability slotted. The more abilities you have slotted in this tree, more recovery. So we got plenty of recovery. And of course, if you can't afford smoke bear hodge, jewels of misrule. Or in this build, you could probably get away with. Uh, it's not in here. But it, any max stam resource food. Can't think of it off the top of my head. It's not in my pocket. Bewitch Sugar Skulls. There we go. Circumvented Fate. Casting an Arcanist ability warps the weave of fate around you, granting you and your group members minor evasion for 20 seconds, reducing damage from AoE attacks. And it can happen every five seconds. So free AOE damage reduction. No wonder we're so tanky. Placable outcome. The will of the Arcanist is absolute. When you consume a crux skin for ultimate. That's just great. Every eight seconds. Can happen every eight seconds. Who don't love ultimate? Ultimate's always nice. Now on to creative rune forms. I only have one skill on. It's not even always on. And the skills we might need to play around a little more. But for now, Mastery of Weaving Fate and Abyssal Water increases your healing done by 3% for each active crux. So this is going to boost your healing for each crux. In the Hideous Clarity, you've started. You stare too long into the abyss. When you generate crux, you restore 225 magicka or stamina, whichever maximum is higher. So, more resource sustained. And a rude Rudition. Knowledge of power. Your XF scholarship increases your magicka and stamina recovery by 18%. Just for the hell of it. And then once we get this, your status and illuminates reduce the cost and increase the strength of your damage shields. So this shield is going to get even better. So, 
bigger shields, more pen when we get there. We'll even have more damage eventually, more movement speed. So we'll get there. So it could even be better. And a reason for vampire, of course, undeath passive. Because every PvP build majority, I'd say 80-90% of them. Reduce your damage taken by 30% based on your missing health. So the less damage you have, the less damage you take. Or the less health you have, the less damage you take. So that is that. So, be sure to follow me on Twitch. We are here live regularly. Trials, Dungeons, Sayerdale. We did a little bit of everything. So that is your Arkness. That is your gameplay. Hope you enjoyed it. Also, if you wanted the Deadly version, go through that. I actually went dual maces. This works well, too. You don't have mace fire. You do deadly. And then we go deadly neck. His sap on the jewelry. And it'd be deadly boots. Deadly shoulder. Trainee chest. And gaze of Sithis. And then your beam would go. And we still keep the whirlwind for an execution because the beam is only good when they're snared. So it's been beneficial to keep whirlwind. And there is two versions. All we did was change one set and a mythic. And then you got tons of health. And this shield is massive. It's even bigger for the first sec. So yeah, so there's your two versions, way of fire, deadly, depending on which way you want to go. The beam gives you a nice armor while you're trying to do it as well. So, thank you. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, follow, catch me on Twitch. Enjoyed? This fucking Arcanist is nasty. Have a good one, everybody.